Hey everybody, welcome to another recap of The Amazing Race. I have to start by giving a shout out to Bethany. Happy belated 13th birthday. I'm sorry I didn't read my email uh, for a couple of days, but I missed it. So, yeah, it's from Samantha. She wants to wish you a happy birthday. Alright, so last time on the race, Micah and Kanan were eliminated because she wouldn't go down the water slide. So they're in Dubai. They're going to be flying to Amsterdam, and when they get there, they need to find a monument that's on a causeway that connects North Holland to Friesland. All right, so the brothers end up coming out to everybody, Sam and Dan. Uh, was it any revelation to anyone besides Maria and Tiffany that these two were gay? I was pretty sure from the beginning, but, you know, <laughs> they're just like my gaydar was going off. All right, so everybody's on the same flight, so it's no biggie. But when they get there, Brian and Erica have a little bit of trouble putting their car into gear because, I don't know, um, I think you should really close the door when you try and put your car into gear. I don't know why he was trying to put it into gear with the door open. Kind of dumb. All right, so they were behind a little bit. So... Once they get in their car and put it into gear, they have to drive to Martini Torin, which is the largest building in the city. And it's a roadblock. So one of the team members is going to have to go to the top of it, and there's no elevator. It's stairs. And on the way up there, they're going to have to count the amount of bells. And by the way, there's 62. <laughs> so once they were up there, though, the bells started ringing, and I don't know about you, but I have been away from a giant bell about five feet, and it is extremely loud. You cannot even hear yourself think, so it was pretty difficult. Uh, once they find out that there was 62 bells, they have to drive to Verhausen de Marne and find the windmill. So uh, the brother, the gay brother, on the way down, told Tiffany, who was going up, that there was 62, so she was able to bypass counting all of the bells and went right to the guy playing them and got her clue. So that totally was not cool. I don't like cheaters. So Erica was having major issues because she decided to count the bells and she's been quite the crab on the race. She's totally been picking on Brian the whole time and she's just a naggy wife. I'm sorry, I, I don't think that's cool at all. And uh, she kind of got a taste of her own medicine, although Brian is not like that to her, but she kind of got put in her place because she made many, many guesses, and it took her quite a while before she uh, came up with the number 62. She even had to stop and take a break, and Brian was more than patient. All right, so after the counting of the bells, uh, it's a detour. It's either Farmer's Game or Farmer's Dance. So for both of the activities, they have to dress up in traditional Dutch clothing and ride bikes to the venues. So in the game, they had to uh, ride their bikes to this creek, strip down to their underwear, swim across, and play three holes of, it looked like, so baby soccer ball golf. And they had to do uh, the three holes, and they had to do it under par, which was eight shots for, for each hole. So that wasn't easy for a lot of the teams. Um, they could have chose Farmer's Dance, though. Uh, they had to ride their bikes to this um, gathering, and they had to ring one of those strongman bells. You really got to hit it with the uh, hammer. And then they had to learn a Dutch dance, perform the Dutch dance, and eat some herring. I like herring, but that herring looked really, really fishy and big and plump and not very delicious. All right, so Sam and Dan and Megan and Shane, they both chose the golf right off the bat. And Sam and Dan just like flew right through it. But Megan and Shane, they had a little bit of trouble because Megan was not very good at golf and certainly not at baby soccer ball golf. But they got through it. Now, the dance proved a little bit more difficult. Gary and Matt chose that first, but they gave up when they found out that they were going to have to eat herring at the end because Matt was totally not cool with eating fish, so they ended up switching to the golf. 
Now the Globetrotters chose that too, and they like sailed through that. But one of them was having some trouble getting the fish down, and he didn't want to talk about it. I don't blame him. It looked pretty... Ugh. And now, Maria and Tiffany. Oh my god, what a cluster. They chose Dan's first. They went and did that. After 30 attempts trying to ring the strongman bell, they decided, uh, let's switch over to the golf. So when they got to the creek, they had to wear life jackets to paddle across. And once they got there, they were having some problems with the golf. So they decided, maybe we should go back to the dancing. So when they got back and were trying to ring the strongman bell again, they could not do it. 71 attempts. They cried. They hugged it out. They cried some more. One of them was not even trying. She was just like, eh, give me a break. You know, you really got to hit that thing. If you're going to play like that, you might as well just quit. So they ended up finally going back to the golf. Uh, Brian and Erica. Hello, kids. You need to read the clue if you're on the race. They totally missed the fact that they had to ride their bikes to the venue. Ugh, not cool. So after uh, the detour, you had to bike to Zoutkamp Harbor, which is the pit stop. So Sam and Dan, they're not that kind of gay. Phil asked if they like dressing up in the, in the Dutch clothing. How many different kinds of gay are there? By the way, they want a sand buggy, which I'm assuming is a dune buggy uh, for coming in first. Megan and Shane came in second. The Globetrotters came in third. And Gary and Matt came in fourth. Now, fifth place, Brian and Erica came in. They tried to check in, but Phil couldn't check them in because they did not ride their bikes to the detour. So they incurred a 30-minute penalty. So, of course, they were sitting on pins and needles on the side waiting for Phil to check them in. And enough time had passed, so they were officially fifth. Now, sixth place, uh, Maria and Tiffany. Unfortunately, they were still on the golf course, and Phil had to go meet them out there and ask them if they wanted to quit. And they never really said that they quit, but it was pretty obvious since it was not a non-elimination leg that since they couldn't finish the task, they were going to be eliminated anyway, I guess. So, yeah, I've got three words for them. Cheaters never prosper. Not cool. I guess you got your just desserts, kitties. All right, so next time, it's a blast in Sweden. And we revisit the worst roadblock ever. Yeah, the unrolling of the hay. And it's going to be quite a problem for Megan and Shane and Sam and Dan. Till next week, much love.